Oh, so first thing we're going to talk about is his meter management. All right, hold on. Before we get into that. Hold on, my bad. Oh, I'm sorry, Leo. You got to go. It's not just... It's not your guy. So something that's very important about chaos is micromanaging his meter properly. Considering you got three gauges. So you got your bullets and you got your focus gauge, you got your tension gauge, uh, which could be used to basically refill your bullet gauge and your focus gauge because one special refills bullets and the other one refills your focus. Uh, so your main game plan is going to be basically how well you can micromanage your meter. All right. So we're going to, we're going to start off with his, uh, bullets because managing your bullets is going to be the key It's going to be the focal point to your game plan because his bullets are so important and I, I know i said you have to have a lot of micromanaging skills when you're playing with chaos but you don't really have to like for instance like i may re reloading my gun part of my game plan uh and what i mean by that let me set the opponent to yeah so the shocking thing about uh you know reloading your gun it has very low recovery and chaos got some really long uh normals which you could use the advantage uh, I set the opponent to do a crouching kick so you can see uh, the max range for his uh, down S is probably right there. Yeah, so you can you could like essentially throw out attack reload and block and you'll be virtually safe. Like it's not too many people who could just punish you from this distance. <laughs> you got his yeah, you see all that that safety you got. So you could just make it a part of your game plan, whether you have ammo or not to just reload your gun. Just, you know what I'm saying? You could be really aggressive with it too. Let's say if they want to throw out uh, a longer range attack. Yeah. Ordinarily, this would be punishable, but because you cancel it, you're safe. You can, you even got enough time to like, even like respond to certain options. Like say if they, you cancel and you know, they throw out a long range attack. You could just use your 6P to interrupt them. Or if they use the low attack, see that distance? You could get for a whiff punish. So if they try to uh, punish you back, you could just go in for a whiff punish. So that's how you could just, you know, reload your gun and not really have to worry about, you know, like, all right, I need to, uh, I need to get a 2D knockdown or I need to knock them down and reload. You could just make it a part of your neutral uh, and you're not really thinking about reloading your gun like that because it reloads pretty fast. Like, I got hit, but yeah, it, it reloads pretty fast. That's three bullets reloaded off of block strings. Uh, so that's just a good way to reload your uh, bullets. Also, you could just throw the shadow clones and go for a quick reload because this reloads insanely fast. So yeah, that's that's another way you could just reload your gun. But I have a more aggressive place that I like playing aggressive, so I want to be in their face, uh, you know, doing stuff. Okay, moving on to his focus gauge. So his focus gauge, he has two ways to refill it. Uh, he can use his special, or he can use his ult. Uh, they both refill the uh, focus gauge. Just the special, the ultimate, just you know, fills it faster. Uh, so you don't you don't need to use it if you don't want to. You could just use the you know the regular ult, uh, special, and that will refill your focus gauge. It does it does other things besides than just refilling your gauge. It also lowers the cost of using your bullets. So ordinarily, you know, if you wasn't in that mode, it, you know you would run out of focus gauge before you shoot your last shot. But when you have the mode on, you have it activated, you can now use every ammo that you have and still have focus gauge left over. Let me see how many shots you can pop off if you use the. Yeah, so you can use five shots in his um his other gun mode, and still like it. You know, ordinarily that costs a lot. Yeah, yeah, I can only pop off two shots. So sometimes it's beneficial to knock the opponent down and then go into your, um, your focus mode before you know, starting your assault. Um, another thing you could do, I have the opponent set to uh, throw out 5P. So you can see uh, canceling into your ult will leave you plus on block. So yeah, you could you could cancel your ult into another attack and still be plus. Uh, this will catch a lot of people off guard because you know people they like the button mash as soon as they, every opportunity they get. 
and go for a counter hit punish. You know, just something simple. You can just go for a full combo, basically. Okay, moving on to aim. Uh, there's two ways I like to use aim, and that's off a of knockdown and off a of hit. And the reason why is because the aim needs time to lock on. Uh, if you knock an op opponent down and you go to aim, it has that time to lock onto the person. If you hit somebody, it automatically locks onto the person. So you could just ignore, you know, you know, the whole half the weight to aim at the person just by following these two rules. Always use it on knockdown or always use it off a block or an attack. Like you could get your offense started just by doing that. Also, if you whiff an attack while you already locked on, it's going to unlock. But if you hit a person and then with attack, it automatically goes to a person. So you need that. You need it to hit the opponent to stay locked on. Um, so that's what you need to keep in mind when you play in the game is one, get off a knockdown to using it after you land a hit. The next section is I'm going to teach you how to use aim to cross your opponent up. It's a bunch of ways you could to cross your opponent up using aim, but I'm going to just show you a few simple setups that I use. Uh, one of my favorite is this one. That's my favorite one. Uh, not only does it cross up, so if you was to attack him without him blocking, it will still link into a combo. So yeah, you get go into you could do a combo, be the crossover, and have a setup at the end of it. So yeah, so not only is you cross an opponent up if they try to attack back. You can frame trap them by just delaying the kick a little bit. So you try to just wait long enough to where they try to attack. You could uh, go in for a counter hit. So it could be a complete block string, or you could just leave a, a gap to where your opponent can attack back, and you can go in for a counter hit and a full combo punish. So um, not to mention, you could also use it to go in for a grab. So you could just throw out the attack. Wait a second and then going for the grab. So yeah, this is a really good crossover that I use. Another way to cross your opponent up off a of block string, uh, you can, you know, going for his uh, dust attack. Uh, it's a unique dust attack because it hits behind him. So we got like a built in crossover move. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, another way you can cross your opponent up off a of knockdown. Like I said, you give your uh, jaw time to lock in. As soon as they wake up, if they try to, you know, butt mash anything, you already switching their inputs by jumping over their head. So if they were planning on waking up DP or special, you switch the inputs to the to the opposite side. Uh, and not to mention, you're attacking them as soon as they get up. So that's uh, one way you could cross them over. And you're going for a combo. Uh, what I like to do is I like to knock them down, do a roll trick them into like, you know, thinking they, they got the advantage to attack me back because I whiffed two rolls, but you just attack them as soon as they get up. So like, here, let me show you. Let me set the opponent to attack as soon as they get up. Let's see. So yeah, you could trick them, go for a counter hit. So if they like try to just wake up and attack, you could shoot your gun, then go in for a full combo because you got the counter hit. And not not to mention why they're knocked down. You're constantly making them guess which side you're going to be on because you're switching their inputs. So you could do a one roll, jump over, jump back, or you could do one roll, jump over. <laughs> you know, it's a it's plenty of ways you could mix your opponent up uh, off a of knockdown. Uh, another crossover you could do is you can after two D, you summon the gun. And you could get the crossover like that. That's another way I like to cross people over. Here, you could just go for a grab too. You could just, it's plenty of ways you can mix your opponent up off of this. Yeah, so that's uh that's another good way to cross people up those uh those are a few car setups that i came up with so far so uh you know the game he just got released this week i'm gonna find more cross-ups throughout the time i'm playing with him and as i as i find my findings i'm gonna just share it with you as i go along 
Um, but yeah, that's just a couple simple setups that you can use. So I'm gonna show you how to do a lot of 50, 50 and some mind games, uh, with aim. What I like to do is I like to whiff a 5k in the air. If I'm getting my offense started. If you shoot it at the height of your jump, you will land behind your opponent. Uh, if you delay it, you will land in front of your opponent. Not to mention if you whiff your 5k, you can land with an overhead and, or you could just choose to land with a low. So it, it's like, it's so many options you could just do off of just do within a 5k off of a, a gunshot essentially. So that's one mind game that I like to use, um, especially if your opponent tries to attack back. You can go in for a full combo punish. Uh, you can land with an overhead. Yeah, so you could land with an overhead, shoot a gun, do a dash, do another air attack and another gunshot and then land for the setup and, you know, refill your bullets. So it's a lot of the 50 50 setups you could do off of just within the air 5k. Uh, not to mention you could just not do anything and then go on for a grab <laughs> if they try to attack back. Another 50 50 uh, mind game you could do is. So if you bounce off the head and you shoot two shots immediately, you'll land behind them. If you delay the second shot, you'll land in front. So this is another uh, crossover 50 50 that you can use. Uh, not to mention while you're landing, you can. You either go for a low or you can land with an over uh, overhead and you can choose which side you want to land on. It's all in the timing though. You got to get the timing down uh, when you do the shots. So yeah, that's another mind game you can use uh, trying to open your opponent up. Yeah, so you can either just keep attacking the guard with overhead, land with overhead, dash and do another overhead. Or you could do the same thing, but end with a low this time. So yeah, it's a lot of ways you can mix your opponent up off of these 50, 50 situations. Like I said, I will be showing more setups in the future. Uh, it'd be too long to cover everything in this one video. I just want to give you a general idea of where to start at. Uh, next, we're going to move on to his shadow clones. Uh, this is arguably one of his, I think this, his shadow clone is more important than his aim. If I'm being honest, uh, his shadow clone is probably his best move. So you can use the shadow clones in a lot of ways. Uh, one of the ways I like to use it rather than just using it to create space. Uh, I like to use it off a of knockdown because you could, uh, you could get a safe jump in like this. So basically let's say if they wake up dragon punch, the shadow clone will eat the hit for you and you still be able to move. Um, and get a full combo punish. So they have to respect the jump in option. Uh, you can then safely jump in with an attack. If they try to jag and punch, you could do a combo afterwards. Uh, if they don't, they just got to accept the pressure. <laughs> so either way, like it, it just, it creates a, a safety for you. Uh, you can also use this aggressively on block string. So and get the punish. <laughs> or you could go in for a grab. Either way, like it's it just you could be you could be really aggressive uh using his shadow clone. Um it's even better when you use it with uh aim because it beats every wake up option. So this setup right here This setup right here beats every wake up option. Like I said, if you knock the opponent down and you give you a chance to aim the lock on, you could summon a shadow clone and go in and rush in as you uh, use an aim. And you hit them as soon as they wake up with uh, the aim. Yeah, so in the corner, this this literally beats every wake up option and you can play hella mind games with the opponent. Yeah, it's just plenty of ways you can play mind games with this. It beats any wake up option. If they try to throw. Yeah. 
it'll beat the throw because you already locked in on them. So you already locked in on them and you hit them as soon as they wake up. What they're going to do? They can't drag it, punch. They can't throw. They can't jump because <laughs> if you hit them as soon as they wake up and they try to jump, they're going to get tagged and get hit for a full combo. Uh, the only thing they can do is special, but even if it's a workaround for them, even wake up special in. So if they try to wake up special, so it's two workarounds for if you gotta, you gotta guess. So basically if you think they about to do the special, you just won't shoot and then you'll cancel your animation. Uh, you cancel your aim while they're doing a the special or you could take the shot. And if you have burst, you could burst. So those are two options that you can do. Uh, that's just, you know, if they see you go into gun mode, you just run up and you pump fake it. You could, um, you could cancel the animation during the thing, but if you already take the shot, you can't cancel the animation because during, um, the cutscene, they'll just think you're trying to take the shot. Yeah. So those are two options that you have to, uh, deal with wake up specials. But besides that, it beats almost every wake up option. They, uh, like I said, they uh, do Dragon Punch. You have enough time to actually just run in there, get the grab, and get another setup off the top of that. Put them right back in the corner. So yeah, so that's how you, you want to use your Shadow Clone. You want to use it aggressively. You want to keep them in the corner. Uh, keep making them guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's how I use my shadow clone. So last thing I want to talk about is this strike throw mix up and frame trapping. So if you want to go for like a very grounded gameplay, unlike, you know how, like I told you the, the crossovers in the air, you can also have a very grounded gameplay by doing a strike throw mix up. Uh, and this is dangerous because you can't guess whether, you know, a, a person is going to go in for a grab or is he going to go in for a low attack? You got to guess. <laughs> it's kind of similar to what like I do when I'm playing Leo is I'll cancel off my five S and stance and I either go for a low or go for a grab. And a lot of people wind up getting grabbed because they anticipate another attack coming or like the overhead coming. So you just could use this to your advantage because he could essentially do that whenever you do that all day. So they gotta, they gotta constantly guess whether you're gonna either go in for another attack or you're gonna go in for a grab. And if they try to challenge you with a grab or an attack, that's that's when the frame trapping part comes in. Let's say if they try to attack your guard, 5S. You could go in for a counter hit. Uh, this will work if they try to throw a button out or they try to throw. You could counter hit them. If they're not, if they're not trying to challenge you back at all, if they're not trying to jump, you could either just go in for a throw. If they constantly standing up, waiting for the overhead, you could go in for a low, uh, or you can cancel five S into do two shots into a dust. So it's a lot of it's a lot of mix ups you could do off of just landing a close slash on an opponent. Uh, same for his uh, his low. You could just constantly keep making your opponent guess. So this is like and also and also if you get a counter hit. That's a guaranteed dust if you uh, land the counter hit into a full counter. It does a lot of damage. So this is this is pretty much my game plan when I'm when I'm fighting with uh, fighting people is that I just either try to keep making them guess over and over to try to open them up and fish for counter hits, and you do that by frame trapping. There's a lot of frame traps that you could do with him, like like that one I showed earlier. Get the dust into combo. This one. That's also a frame trap. Doing it off the low. Is it, it, that's all you want to do is 
constantly have your guess, uh, constantly have your opponent guess between uh, overhead, low, uh, close slash. Uh, you could delay the gun to try to open them up. Yeah, so you could delay the gunshot. There's plenty of ways you could open your opponent up uh, using him, and they gotta constantly be guessing. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's his strike throw mix up and frame trapping and also how to use his dust too So you can use his dust in a combo if they're crouch blocking let's See let's set this person to crouch block uh, If they crouch blocking <laughs> that's a, a free uh, dust combo So yeah, it's a, it's a whole bunch of stuff. You could just play around just like like mixing up your opponent on their block string not to mention even if they don't stand up and block it you can still keep your safe uh you can still keep yourself safe by just shooting more bullets that way you don't get punished yeah so that's that's pretty much all i have for y'all to, uh, today guys uh, i hope y'all learned something uh i showed y'all uh, a few combos the other day with the preview uh, if you if you want me to do another uh, combo guide, just let me know in the uh, in the comments. I'll do a, a in depth combo guide because I feel like I'm kind of making this uh, guide already too long, and I can't cram everything into one video. So I just wanted to give y'all like a generalized way how to play with them, and then I'm gonna tell y'all more stuff later on as I go down the line. Uh, so yeah, hit that like button if you want uh, more chaos content, and I'm gonna see y'all guys in the next video. Peace. Now that you got me started, I just can't stop. No, no, no. Cause I love.